Good morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be replacing the longboard with the super longboard. That's right, it's here and we're ready to get this installed. But before we install this, we need to get this uninstalled and taken that off. So let's get going in that. One of the first things I wanna do is label each cable here. So we know which one is which. So we got our Z motor here. We're gonna put Z. And this just helps uh, keep everything nice and easy to know. We don't have to go and trace back where everything is. Just using some painter tape. And doesn't have to be perfect, but at least all right, I'm gonna rewrite that because I folded it right on the Z. Or Z for the rest of the world. Let's move that out of the way. Then we have our Y2 motor. So let's go and get this guy here. Get labeled up, Y2, and Y1 is next. But I am really looking forward to this super long board. Speed increase, a lot more functionality. So we shall see how this all turns out. Another interesting fact, it is using a USB-C. So that is nice. That's a little bit easier to plug in. And then we have the X motor right here. That's a lot of tape, but hey, it's visible, right? X. My next cord here is actually my IOT. Not that I have anything else and I should know what it is, but we're still going to label it. Let's just be consistent in what we're doing. And we have it going to the coolant, or I'm just going to put cool, because that's a cool thing to have. Next, we have our ground five volt for the Z the five volt for the Y and the X. So let's go ahead. That is the Z. And this is for our induction sensor. Sorry, didn't say that. This is Z or Z. And because it is a different type of plug, I'm not going to put induction on there. We got our Y. Speaking of which, I printed out some new holders because I uh, broke mine. But I need to get some threaded inserts for it before I can uh, change them out. So looking forward to getting that done as well. I got a lot of upgrades uh, I'm looking to do on the long mill. <clears throat> X, Y, and... Oh, haha, -ha, see? Make sure we label everything, right? Because we already have Z. We need, this is X. There we go. Now, I'm not going to be labeling the emergency stop button because the long mill comes or the super long board comes with a new uh emergency stop and has some new buttons on it as well so that's going to be fun and then we have power not going to label that i'm also building a holder for the power so i can mount it up here and i really also hope to get some of this wiring uh, cleaned up. It's pretty much been the same since I got it. Uh, I haven't really done much to it, but hey, it'll be nice to try to clean this up. We'll see how far I get in that. 
All right, so now let's unplug everything. Careful with these induction sensor ones. Don't want to, we don't want to pull from the wires here and pull it out of the casing. So we want to make sure we get that casing and pull from there. Grab our screwdriver, get the right size bit here. And now I'm pretty sure this is the point where I'm going to speed it up. And that's why I left that top screw for last. So at least had something to hold on to and then just try to fall forward. There we go. And there's the super long, I mean, the long board. You've served me well. Thank you for what has it been three plus years of uh, doing excellent. Now I need to think of something else to do with this. All right, all kidding aside, let's uh, get that set out of the way. All right, so we have our mounting surface here where I'm gonna put the super long board. This is uh, just a piece from an old uh, Ikea furniture we had, screwed in there. So, hey, it's held up. Let's see what we're gonna need to do to get the super long board mounted to this. So let's uh, open up the box here. There we go. Woohoo! Like I was saying, there is a new emergency stop. You can see we have three buttons and looks like a LED lit uh, top part and a new uh, way to connect it to the super long board. All right, let's take this out and take a look at it. Ooh, that's nice. And I think this is smaller. Let's, let's take a look real quick. Let's lighter and smaller. Look at the size difference. That is a major difference there. Wow. All right, let's put that back. Nice frosted acrylic case there. We have our RS-485. I believe that's going to be for uh, spindle control. We have an on off switch here, laser, TLS, power, in Ethernet, we have our e-stop uh, plug-in, our probe, an SD card reader, a pendant jack, and a USB cable that will hook up to our Raspberry Pi or your computer. As we, you can tell, but where are all our motor hookups? They are inside. We have all of our connections inside, and then we route them out through here or here. All right, taking a look here. Let's see. So do I wanna mount it like this and have all my cables come out here and go this way because my USB connection's here, that'll give me less distance to have to travel to get to the Pi. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to mount it like this, I'm pretty sure. This is how I want to mount it. Cool. All right, let's get the drill and get this thing mounted. So before I start drilling and everything, very important step before all of that. Coffee. <sighs> All right. Here we go. Let's get this out of the way. Put that back in the box. All right. Now we need to figure out what size drill bit we need. Let's go ahead and take this off. I'm pretty sure this is too big. 
grab one of our previous screws, see if we're gonna be fine. Just might wanna run these screws through before. It's a little tight, but it'll work. Plus I have to dig all the way back there, try to find some other screws. So we'll just, that's off. There we go. Let's make sure it's straight. So now we're gonna take our Sharpie. I'm going to grab my level. Make sure we have it oriented the right way now. we go. We have our holes marked. And now we drill our holes. And now just need to mount it. And don't worry, yes, I am going to screw these all the way in. Just like to make sure, get them all started before I uh, tighten any of it all the way down. And there, we got it mounted. Awesome. Let's see if I actually kept it level. I'm not like, I'm, it's not like I'm gonna remount it. Hey, it says it's level. One thing I didn't think of was lowering the table, making sure all that, but it's level to where it's at right now, so. So, I'm guessing we just can slip it in like that. Oh, here, maybe this might be better to get it in there. Yeah. Okay, that's Z. Just make sure. Yep, that's our Z axis. So we can plug that in there. So, and we want to make sure it's behind this groove. We don't want these wires getting caught when we put the acrylic back in. Okay. What do we have here? We have X and X is all the way down here. You know, I'm thinking I might want to run the furthest down instead of trying to overlap all these. Yeah, let's do it that way. That was just a test fit. How about that? Yeah, test fit. That's what we'll say. Let's get the first, furthest one down. That's this one. Ooh, what about here? Yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Running it through there. These are probably, should be for up there. That fits a lot nicer. It really does. All right. So we have Y1. Where are you, Y1? Front X, give ourselves a little slack there. There's Y1. Okay, now we need Y2. There we go. Y2. And now we need Z. No, yep, that's the wrong Z. Where'd you go, Z? There we are. Tape's getting in the way, but we'll remove that once, you know, we're good with how everything's in there. Cool. All right, let's take uh, the tape off for the motors. There we go. Our tape is off. Now let's gently work these wires. So again, we want to make sure this lip right here that we're all the wires are behind it. We do not want to be over that lip. So again, wires can pull out. So let's be gentle. You know, and I know for some of us with these bigger hands, gentle is a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not always something that's e that comes easy. 
Now we need to get our induction sensor. So let's take a look at this board. I think I'm gonna have to bring out my cell phone, get some, shed some light on this. Let's see. So here we go. This is the flood. This is where we're gonna hook up our IT switch or IOT. Let's zoom in here. And then we have SWT1, 2, PWR1, PWR2, and ADC. And there's our limits. Let's see if we can. So we have BCC. We have Y1, Z. X, Y, Z. Hmm. So, am I going to have to rewire all of this into one plug? Well, let's find out. All right. So, I was thinking this was going to be for the limit switches. But here we go, limit, 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 limit. Now to figure out which ones I need. So we have X, Y1, Y2, and Z. So let's get our limit switches here. So it is gonna support two Y limit switches in the future, not quite yet. There we go. And don't want these over this or under. I think I want them under. I don't know. Just feels right under. So run all those in there. We'll come down to this hole. All right. So we have Y. And we're gonna run it off Y1, but let's do X. Let's start with the furthest one away. Here's our X. Make sure we put them in correctly. There we go. You can tell I did a lot of research before this. I just kind of really watched the videos on it and saw that it was moving faster. Uh, I was running Gerbil Howl and was like, let's go for it. So, okay, there's our X, our Y. Again, let's make sure we have them oriented right. So the clips should slide into the indented part right there. Get that off. And our Z, we're gonna skip over the Y1, or Y2, I'm sorry. Again, oriented right. Make sure they're nice and snug in there. Let's get the tape off this one. Okay. And now we have our IOT switch. So let's, before I go plugging stuff in, I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Let's make sure that's the flood. That's where I'm plugging in my IOT switch. And this uh, turns the router off and on. And I also have some LED lights connected to that switch. So we will pull this guy out and we'll run them here we'll get that here let's do that there we go we can tuck that away for right now 
try to clean it up a little later. I think that's why I'm bad at cable management. I'm like, hey, let's, let's, we'll, we'll clean that up a little later. Now we need the bag of goodies with, uh, that came in the box so we can hook up our e-stop and uh, see what else we may need to hook up. So let's take a quick look at what comes in the bag. We got some connectors there. I forget the, their def, which, what type they are. I'm assuming this is for the uh, again, I'm assuming this is for the spindle control. And so if you see me saying something else and my mouth doesn't match up, that's because I was wrong. This is not for the spindle. This is for the e-stop. Okay, we have our USB-C to USB-B cable, and we have a bracket and some screws, nuts and bolts, all that fun stuff. Again, I did not do a lot of research on what all plugged into where before this. I was like, let's just dig through it. But before I start plugging things in, I'm gonna look on my phone and double check. They do have the SLB manual online, so we'll just go find power in e-stop. There we go. So I should have remembered earlier, our e-stop is there, and that's okay. We'll get this out here. Make sure this is plugged in the correct way. There we go. Grab our e-stop. Plug in the telephone connector. Yes, that's, or ethernet, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. We got our new e-stop. Ooh, that button is satisfying. Cool, that's set up. So last thing we need, power. And our power is right here. So let's come in on here. Think that's the right orientation. There we go, it is. All right. Wow, I, besides the USB cable, I think we're all plugged in, so I believe we can uh, put the acrylic cover on. Before I do that, first of the first 500 club, so that was nice of CNC Labs to do that and put that on there. Coming from the side here. Again, I don't want to force this in. Just kind of, the reason I'm coming, I mean, I could just do this and push it in, but I'm kind of just trying to see how the cables are going to fit up against it and know where it, there's any tension or issue. And then there we go. So the cover has this, it slides into this slot here. And then to secure it, you have this little thumb screw. That we screw in right here. So everything's nice and secure. All right. Now this might be an issue for me. And I may have to rethink my whole setup here, depending on how long this is. I mean, it's a decent size. I'm about 6'2", so probably what, five foot cord? Maybe, I don't know. I'm bad with, uh, I'm bad with guessing at links and all that, but. USB there, bye-bye old USB cord. 
we'll run it in through here. There we go. Okay, I have a good amount of space there. Let's see. Yeah, I normally have it set like this. So cool, except I don't like it running over all that. Let's clean that up. So I'm gonna take a minute, see what I can do here to kind of clean up some of this wiring mess and see what I can do to kind of clean it all up. All right, now for the moment of truth. Does it, is everything gonna work? So let's power it on and get this started. Three, two, one, power. Okay, Pi is booting up. Let's make sure our switch is in the on position. There we go. I'm used to hearing the motors going at this point. Don't see anything powering up on the board. Let's check our power supply. Oh, well, that kicked on. Ah, power supply was a little loose. Whew, that board does look nice. That uh, the light coming through that frosted acrylic. Cool. The emergency stop does light up. There we go. Block out the lights, you can see. Does light up red. Pretty cool. All right, let's open up G-Cinder. Now I'm trying this on 1.0.6. Let's hope this all works. Now I have a whole video going over why I'm not running a newer version of G Cinder with the Pi. Yay, 32 versus 64 bit operating system. So you can go check out that video. All right. All those are on. Okay. Let's, oh, okay. So, I do not think uh, this is going to work with this version of G Center. We're not gonna, because it's Garble Hal, we are going to have some issues here. So, it's not gonna work. We need a new sender. Like I said previously, G sender is not working on the 64 bit with uh, the Raspberry Pi, so, I need to find a new G Cinder that supports Gerbil Hal, or figure out if this version does support it as well. So let me go do some research and we'll come back and see what we can find out. So replace the Pi 4 with a Pi 5. We have UGS and CNC JS. I don't think CNC JS is gonna work, but we'll try that first. And if that doesn't, we'll go over to UGS and see if we can get that to connect. Third, and worst case scenario is, I had to order a mini PC and we can run uh, the latest G Cinder off that, but we're gonna have to uh, run Windows, so fun. But let's see if we can get it working on the Pi and get this thing moving. All right, power on.
Like I said, we're gonna try CNC JS first. So we'll open up our web browser. It's been a while since I've used it. So let me, not, it doesn't look like it's uh, connecting. We're here, let's unlock. Ooh, it's working and it's moving a lot faster. Now my bed is shaking because I still have it up um, on the wheels. So we're, we're still testing things out, making sure everything works. One of the first things I'm noticing is just even the sounds of the motors. It is responding a lot faster. Um, I, so far, great. Let's see here. Let's move it. Cool. We can see on the board that it's changing colors as we move it. Well, I can turn it on and off from here, the spindle. Wow, router, before I get all those mad comments down below. Okay, and that's messing with you know, under spindle, coolant, control that from there, nice. Here, I wanna try out Uggs real quick. It connected, no problem. We were on Gerbil 32. Now, let's see, step size is 10. That is moving kind of slow and a little bit different sound than, here, bump it up 50. Seems like it's moving in precision mode. I haven't used Uggs in a very long time, so I'm not quite sure, but it is working. And still gotta figure out something to do with those micro uh, bumps there, but it's going. Uh, I still have that mini PC on order, so gonna try G Cinder out on that, see which what I like best. So I got Uggs. CNC JS, and hopefully by the end of the day, G Cinder, but on Windows. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really do appreciate it. If you like these videos, hey, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'm gonna be back with more as I start to figure this out, dive deeper into it, and figure out what I'm doing. So until next time, remember, keep making stuff.